So Notion is really nice about two things. It's really nice about letting you write up mathematical notation um, directly in your Notion documents. And it's really nice about making each one of your sort of paragraphs, each one of the sort of elements of your proof that you're writing up or the problem that you're solving is really easy to sort of grab them and rearrange them if you need to change the order in which they appear. So I really like it as a platform for kind of, you know, creating outlines for proofs and then creating finished proofs at the end of the day. So let's do an example sort of together. Um, and what I want to do is look at, let's say we look at this first um, problem for a class presentation today. Prove or disprove using the definition of convergent sequence that the sequence of alternating minus one to the ends, one minus one, one minus one, um, does that or does that not converge to zero? Uh, so first thing I would just ask us to think about is do we think that's a true statement or do we think that that's false? Are we going to try to prove this or are we going to try to disprove this? If you can so, go through the easy way out, sure, but yes, you know, exactly. not as rigorous well, it's, I mean, they're both equally rigorous. Just one of them is closer to first principles than the other, right? One of them is closer to the definition of convergence than the other. So rightly, you look at this and say, the alternating sequence one minus one, one minus one, it has two different subsequences that are each convergent, but are convergent to different limits, right? It has a subsequence of plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, which is a constant subsequence that converges to positive one. And it has a subsequence, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, which is constant sequence that converges to negative one. And we know, so this is the big hammer that we have to use to take this road. We know if we've proven it, that a sequence is convergent if and only if all of its subsequences are convergent and that the limits of all of its subsequences all agree with one another, right? Um, so that's a big theorem that for us is part of the 2C results, um, uh, I don't know if it's even listed in this list yet here yet, but um, but yeah, we need all of the subsequences to be convergent and to have their limits all agree. And since that doesn't happen here, if we have that theorem to use, we can use that theorem to say definitely not convergent. Um, but as you say, if we don't have that theorem or if we want to really be first principles about it, and I kind of do at the beginning because it's going to get us back into that mindset of how to work carefully with definitions, then we should try to use the epsilon delta definition to navigate this, per, sorry, epsilon n definition of sequence convergence to, to navigate this. So here's one reason I like Notion is because that definition is right up here, sort of it's hidden, um, but when you wanna see it, you can kind of open it right up. A sequence is a function from n from the natural numbers into a set x, and a sequence is convergent to a limit L if for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a natural number N such that once we get past that natural number N, all of the terms of the sequence are within a distance of epsilon from that limit. So that's kind of the definition of convergent sequence. So if we're gonna try to use this uh, to disprove that this sequence is convergent, let's say so. So to begin the, to begin the proof, we will show that this, uh, uh, this claim is not true this sequence does not converge to zero. Right? So one of the things that's nice about Notion is every time you hit enter, you get into a new paragraph. And that new paragraph can be, you know, whatever we put here, it can be slid up and down and rearranged however you like. It can be moved to different blocks and so forth. So it makes rearranging your argument uh, really nice to do. Um, okay, so if we wanna show that the sequence doesn't converge to zero, we should take this definition and negate it, turn it inside out, right? If this is the definition of what it means for a sequence to converge to a limit, what we need to apply is we need to apply a definition of what it means for a function to not converge to that claimed limit. So I'm gonna kind of make that, I'm gonna add uh, a new toggle list here and kind of you know, write in here, definition of a, fun uh, of a sequence not converging to L, right? I'm just gonna kind of write my negation over in here. So to negate this definition, we would say that a n does not converge to L if, and then how do I how do I negate for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a natural number n such that for n greater than n, we have a n minus L in absolute value is less than epsilon. This is probably one of the things that you most got sort of impressed upon you in first semester analysis is how to negate a definition that has all these different pieces and quantifiers and stuff in it. Uh, so what would that look like? It was fun. I don't know. Yet. 
So to negate this first quantifier for all epsilon greater than zero, we would turn that into the existential. There exists an epsilon. And now notice what I'm doing with math. In between pairs of double dollar signs, I'm writing my mathematics expression. So epsilon with a backslash there, uh, greater than zero. And when I close my double dollar sign, uh, actually, I might need to have no spaces in between my double dollar sign and my expression. Uh, there we go. Uh, it automatically parses that LaTeX language and puts it in as an expression right there in my text. So Notion is super smart about that. So if you have LaTeX commands at your fingertips, um, that is the quickest way to do it. Um, there is also an equation editor that's built into Notion that you can use that kind of gives you that more sort of graphic interface based um, way of, of writing things up. You can also make an entire new block, an entire new paragraph in Notion as an equation um, just by sort of hovering over it, choosing this little handle on the side, clicking on it, and turning it into a block equation. Um, and so that'll just give you a, a, an equation that sort of uh, occupies an entire line here inside of uh, my proof. And so you would use that if you have some larger expression uh, that you don't want to be sort of included within a line of text. All right, so let's finish turning this definition inside out. If there exists an epsilon greater than zero, uh, and then what happens? For all in, in the set. So now that we've written this 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 definition out, we kind of want to keep that you know on the the back burner as we move forward to try and actually do this piece of the proof. So if there exists an epsilon greater than zero, so I know now that I need to find an epsilon. I'm just going to kind of write that. Um, such that for all capital N, there exists a little n such that this thing is true. So do you remember what is a what is a helpful value to choose for epsilon? So if we have to actually choose that epsilon, what is a mm -hmm. smart choice? Half. It helps to do that. Epsilon equals one half. Why is that a good choice? Well, because every single element in our, I guess, set, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, because the sequence is made of all these elements, and well, every element is either going to be one or negative one, in which, you know, sure, like one, every single one is going to be greater than one half. And so yeah, this way for all and instead of like, and yes. So here's how I like to think of it, right? Um, I'm going to try and hide my notion window for just a second. There we go. So here is my sequence, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one. And the epsilon that we choose is going to define this sort of strip uh, along the y-axis, uh, centered at zero. So from zero to positive epsilon and from zero to minus epsilon. And if I choose epsilon equals one half, then I'm making this strip sufficiently narrow that we cannot find an infinite tail of my sequence, which completely resides within this orange strip, right? It's the strip is so narrow that in fact, we end up including none of the elements of the sequence in it. Um, and so yeah, choosing epsilon equals one half uh, would, be the, uh, it would be a good place to get started uh, with this. And so, you know, we're running out of time here. So I'm going to try to just abbreviate this little last piece. So let epsilon double dollar sign, because I'm writing a math equation, epsilon equal one half fraction one, two. All right, so let epsilon equal one half. We will show that for all natural numbers n, there exists a little n greater than n, such that uh, absolute value a n minus l, and l is equal to zero here, because that's the claimed uh, value of my limit, is greater than or equal to epsilon, which is one half. And so what I like, again, about Notion is that I've got my whole definition right above me here while I'm writing this line. Um, and now that I'm done with it, I can just kind of tuck it out of the way. Um, and then we go forward and we write the rest of the proof. Um, and if we're, you know, at the end, if we want to just delete this definition out of there, we can delete it out of there. Um, so we write out this argument, right? Because all the terms in my sequence are outside of this strip. That means that no matter how far out the horizon capital N is set, the very next term after that one is automatically going to be outside of that strip because all the terms are outside of that strip. So choosing little n to be one more than big N. Um, we know for sure that that little n is bigger than capital N uh, and that that uh, little nth term of the sequence is more than one half of a unit of distance away from the purported limit of zero because of this calculation, because all my terms have uh, absolute value of plus or minus one. 
Thus, um, the sequence does not converge to the limit 0. And there we go. Um, I, I missed analysis. 